Good morning, everyone. Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. Today, I just have a bunch of random plant chores, and I wanted to bring you guys along with me. The first thing that I need to get to is my purple hyacinth bean. I sewed these a couple weeks ago. I'll put a link up top, and you can see I was a little bit overzealous with the seeding. I put four, five, sometimes six seeds in one pot, and I didn't need to do that. I don't know why I did that. So I had to go through. These guys, they grow so fast. I have them under my lights, um, under my grow lights, so I just thin those out, and I went ahead and I just cut them at the bottoms. Then here you can see I have some Indian Spring Hollyhock. My aunt gave these seeds to me and that is her picture of her hollyhock that was in her yard. I'm actually having a lot of trouble getting these to, to germinate. I know that you can just throw hollyhock seeds outside, but I really want these to bloom this year. So I was hoping that if I started them indoors a little early, I might be able to get them to bloom this year since they are biennials. So you can see the root system just looks absolutely fantastic on this and I just wanted to divide them up. So now I know I have two of my aunt's Indian Spring Hollyhocks. Thank you, Shelby. And I'm gonna put these in my plumbago bed. I think that they will be really, really nice and beautiful out there. And even if they don't bloom this year, I'm okay with that, but I might as well try. I wanted to show you guys this little trowel that I got from Gardener Supply. I absolutely love it. I'll link it down below. It makes jobs like this so easy, especially when you have these 36 count trays that you see right here. This tray on the right is my tiny tomato project. It's a bunch of micro dwarf tomatoes. Some of them I got from Baker's Creek and some of them, I, well most of them I got from Renaissance Seeds. And my goal for this project is to have a bunch of different kind of tomatoes that I can put on my patio. Over here on the left is my tray of Bells of Ireland. And these are the seeds that I sewed in a wet paper towel. You can see they all came up. Even that one that I just pointed to came up, but I let them get a little dry and that one dried out. But you can see I planted extra in this too. So I have to come and I have to thin these out. And so for the Bells of Ireland, I'm just gonna divide a couple of them so that I can fill each cell. So there's two different ways that you can thin your seeds. You can either cut them from the bottom like I'm doing here with the micro dwarf tomatoes, or you can dig them out like I did with the hollyhocks, separate them, and then replant them. And it's kind of a matter of preference. Obviously, if you separate them um, or pull them, you're gonna be doing more damage to the root system, so you're at higher risk of, of um, stressing the seedling out to the, to the point where it dies. But, you know, it's a really good way to save the seedlings. So you can see right here, this ink spot micro dwarf tomato, uh, one cell didn't come up and so I decided to divide that one right there. I honestly don't even know why I'm dividing it at this point. I'm only planning on planting one of these seedlings and growing them on. I just feel more comfortable when I have extra. Uh, are you guys like that? Do you guys get really worried and plant extra seedlings all the time? So here you can see I have one extra cell of these Bells of Ireland and I'm gonna take this cell that has three of them and I'm just gonna divide them up very, very gently. You see, I'm just really being careful, trying not to grab the leaves and you know yank them apart because I don't wanna break it. And here my filming is just quality with my hand right in front of the camera. I, I apologize, you guys. I promise I'll get better at this type of filming. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna divide it from that one cell and then put it in the other cell. And then what I'm gonna do with the Bells of Ireland is I'm gonna go through to the rest of them and I'm gonna thin them. And I'll show you here in just a little bit, the ones that you wanna thin are the seedlings that are stretching. So usually there's one here, I'm gonna do a freeze frame. Right there, you can see that seedling has stretched to get some sunlight, get out of the way of the other seedling. And so that's the one you wanna to choose to go ahead and cut from the bottom. And when you cut that seedling, that root system will just die. And then the other one can you know, grow and thrive and have all the room it needs. So thinning your seedlings is really, really important. If you don't do it, you'll have multiple seedlings and multiple plants, but they just won't do as well. And you can right, see right here, I missed a little one. It was hiding underneath the other, this pygmy microdwarf. 
So anyways, this is, this tray is all done. I have all my micro dwarf tomatoes. They all look good. I'm petting them to get them stronger. Um, you know, that's one way that you can get the seedlings stronger. You can also put a fan on them. That's really helpful as well. And then you can see my bells of Ireland. Those just look fantastic. So moving on to the next project I have, I have my other 36 count tray and I have to clean it. You wanna clean them in between. Um, I, I reuse these trays so often. I'll link below where I got them. Um, I got them, they're, I think they're Burpee uh, brand, but they are self-watering trays and I just, I, I absolutely love them. So here I'm just pointing out, I just wanted to um, point out Wintour Gardens in Reading. If you guys live anywhere near Reading, it's this fantastic, nursery that is just so wonderful my parents live up there and I just love that place absolutely so I'm reusing their box to protect my counter um, as I fill this tray and my plan for this tray is for my cut flower garden and I have a couple of different flowers that I'm gonna grow first one is king size apricot from uh, Johnny's that's an aster and then afternoon white Cosmo and these two I grew last year I'll show you a bouquet that I I absolutely love that had them in it and then here's Florette's lilac peony bread seed poppy and I did not have luck with the bread seed poppies last year but I'm gonna try them again this year this is that bouquet it's actually the first bouquet of 2021 and it had the afternoon whites and the king aster king apricot asters in it and I loved that bouquet so labeling everything first thing I'm gonna start off with is the afternoon white cosmos you can see I'm zooming in it's that white one right there and it's just it was the easiest thing to grow it was the easiest thing to seed you can see the seeds of the cosmos are long and thin and you just want to cover them really lightly so what I do is I just press them into the soil and then I go back and I just cover them just a little bit and then add some vermiculite at the end cosmos are really easy to germinate they're an excellent starter flower for a, a beginner cut flower gardener so that's a really good option um, so the next one is the king apricot aster right there and I was obsessed with this flower last year the color was just absolutely beautiful I would not call it apricot I really didn't get apricot colors it was more of like a blush pink and it was absolutely gorgeous you can see these seeds are a lot smaller than the cosmos these cosmo seed or excuse me aster seeds always remind me of tomato seeds um, so i kind of sow them the same way and johnny seeds are so fantastic they'll tell you on the back of the packet and they were telling me to sow them an eighth of an inch deep so again really easy i just pressed them in and then i just covered them with a little bit extra soil now the florette bread seed poppy she really doesn't give as much information um, she doesn't really tell you what to do but i know with poppy seeds you know they're so small it's really hard to sow just one or two in each cell so I just kind of sprinkled them over each cell pressed them in and then covered them with vermiculite with the plan that I will thin them uh, after they grow and it is recommended to direct seed poppies however I do have a lot of slugs in my garden and slugs love poppies um, so I like I, I would I feel more comfortable sowing them inside until they get to be a good size and then hopefully I'll transplant them out and they'll they'll do okay so here I am taking the seed tray back to my room yes I have my lights in my room because I have no other place to put them and then I spray and then I cover it with the humidity dome and you want to leave the humidity dome on until most of the seeds have germinated and it would be a lot better if you did one type of seed per tray so that when you know because they're not going to all come up at the same time but I just don't have enough room for that I have to put them all in the same tray so just remember that you know if you're on a bigger scale than I am try and break each tray up so you can take the humidity dome off when you need to all right the last project I'm going to get to today these are begonias begonia bulbs tubers most people call them bulbs so I've been letting these guys wake up and warm up and they've just been underneath my lights on a heat mat and you can see I'm pointing out the eyes that are stomach that are starting to come out on the concave part of the bulb and then once the eyes come out then they're ready to be pre sprouted and I could go ahead and I could sow these in my garden right now but the place where I'm planning to put them has other 
plants in it right now it's going to be my flower bed by my front door so I wanted to grow them on first inside and so what I'm doing is I just took a flat a tray and I filled it with potting soil not seed starting soil seed starting soil excuse me just regular potting soil and then I'm just pushing these in and this reminded me of baking I, I felt like I was baking cookies um, so I'm just kind of shoving them in the dirt and then I'm going to cover them lightly with dirt and begonia tubers or bulbs they are really susceptible to rot so you really don't want to water them too much I'm just I'm I'm barely moistening the soil and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray the top of these so that's it for today it was just a bunch of chores that i wanted to bring you guys along for i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got some motivation from this to get your plant chores done spring is coming i hope you guys have a chance to get into your garden and i will see you very soon thanks so much Thank you.